I've always liked post-apocalyptic end of the world movies. It can be argued that they're the easiest type of stories to write. After all, the objectives for the characters is simple, just stay alive. But there's usually something standing directly in the path of their survival, some impending danger that's constantly pressing the boundaries of their comfort zone. Sad thing is, A Quiet Place is so poorly thought out that I really didn't know how to make sense of it. The story should be as easy as making toast, but they took such a simple idea and added a few too many ingredients to it. There's so much to like about this film, despite all of the flaws. There's some great emotional moments, and it was shot and directed well. However, this has to be one of the laziest scripts ever written. So I saw an opportunity to create a theory, and in the process, I managed to find flaws in nearly every scene of the film. If you haven't seen it yet, you should first check out my Too Stupid to Survive video, where I point out all of the strange and idiotic decisions that this family makes and all of the shortcut writing and underdeveloped world building. I did see a good story lost somewhere inside of this film, a story that made more sense than noise hunting aliens. I actually wrote out two pretty detailed theories that ended up becoming ridiculous ideas, but they did lead me to a more realistic explanation of the events of the film. And so, I'd like to share my creative process with you a little. So I started with the basic questions. What are these aliens? What do they want? And where do they come from? Of course Cloverfield was first on my list. I found that each type of alien we see in the Cloverfield movies is designed for the environment that they're in, and the aliens in A Quiet Place seem to fit right into this idea. Next I went to the Tremors films, and simply inserted these aliens into the Graboids life cycle. Then that led me to try to explain how these aliens managed to wipe out the entire world's population when they seem to have such an obvious weakness. So I thought up a more complicated theory. Maybe this movie was part of a bigger shared universe. I thought, what if they lived out near the testing facility where the creatures from the mist crossed over into our world? What if they weren't aliens from space, but creatures from another dimension? Creatures like the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. Then this quick shot opened up the idea that the aliens might be something that we've already seen before. In Prometheus, we find out that the engineers were planning to exterminate all life on Earth, but something happened that killed everyone on their ship. We also learned that the black goo can transform smaller, harmless animals into new and aggressive species. What if another smaller ship, containing the black goo, crashed on Earth, but instead of a worm, it transformed an ant or some other insect? What if the aliens that we see in A Quiet Place are simply xenomorph ants? We never actually see them kill anyone. The camera always cuts away or there's something blocking our view. We can clearly see the raccoon being killed though. Maybe they aren't killing the people. Maybe they need human hosts to take back to their hive to impregnate. This would explain how they're able to kill everyone in the world when it takes three of them to kill a small town. Remember that quick shot of the old lady dead in the woods? She had what appears to be a single bloody wound, possibly an exit wound. I know it sounds like a reach, but I'm just explaining the process I went through to get to a more sensible explanation and to find answers to all of the questions that I had. Even though I was able to make this idea logically work, I still felt that there was a better explanation. The Xenomorph idea led me to incorporating the Ursa from After Earth, explaining how it's an upgraded version of the Quiet Place alien. Humans try and escape Earth and are followed by a modified and more efficient alien that hunts by smelling fear. At that point I knew I had crossed over into just cramming in every alien invasion film idea and connecting the cliches. But the fact that this film had such a high rating was still in my mind. I wanted to understand what everybody else was seeing that I was somehow missing, so I decided to watch it again, but this time I ignored all of the alien parts, and I was able to see this movie for what it really was. And it's not a horror movie, it's a family drama, with domestic abuse as its centerpiece. After I abandoned the more fun but obvious alien invasion path, I thought of M. Night Shyamalan's The Village for some reason. I found many parallels with both films. Both movies have a main character that's lacking one of their senses. Someone dies that causes the character to venture away from the safety of their home. They both take place on an isolated farm surrounded by forest, and elusive monsters lurking in that forest. A simple thing attracts the monsters to the safety of the farm. They both hide underground when the monsters come. And most importantly, they're both films that are falsely advertised as horror. 
Of course these details play out a little differently on screen, but it got me to thinking about the elements of the story that everyone might find appealing and not even know it. Maybe the movie was smarter than I was giving it credit for. It's safe to say that Reagan is the protagonist of the story, so everything is told from her perspective. The perspective of a person who can't hear in a world where everyone must be silent. Just as Ivy from the village is blind in a world where a certain color is forbidden. Strange coincidence? Or is everything we see in the film being told to us from Reagan's perspective? The lack of noise is the way that Reagan is experiencing the world. This movie isn't free of dialogue, however. There are a few scenes where they talk, but strangely, those scenes are always when Reagan isn't around. Maybe everyone does talk in the film. But since we're seeing the movie from Reagan's perspective, the world is silent. The monsters in the village are discovered to only be people dressing up and pretending to be monsters. Well, what if I told you that A Quiet Place does a similar thing? Ooh, so exciting. In order to see this clearly, we must first remove the expectation of this being a horror movie and instead view it as a young girl's experience with her abusive father and terrified family. So let's start from the beginning. We start with the family inside of a grocery store. The town is quiet because from Reagan's perspective, the world is always quiet. The lack of people reflects her feelings of isolation, her and her family being alone and trapped with her abusive father. Everything is fine here because they're in public, but as soon as they're far enough away, the father loses his temper and accidentally kills the youngest child. Maybe there are no aliens. Maybe the aliens are the abusive side of the dad. Just watch this scene with the aliens removed. In fact, if every scene with the aliens was removed, the movie would look exactly as I'm explaining it to you right now. Over the next half hour we see the family go through their daily routines. I was confused as to why we needed to see this, and why we needed to see what day it was, but I think this is telling us how many days it's been since the dad has lost his temper. For a family that survived a hostile alien invasion, they sure are happy, maybe because there are no monsters in the woods. When the sun breaks the lantern, Everyone seems to be focused on the dad's every move, and the way this is shot makes it look as if the dad's angry and everyone's afraid of him, and not the supposed monsters outside. The mom backs away as the dad approaches, and the son is practically begging his apology. This honestly looks like a man that's been abusive towards his family. Something to take notice of is that every other person in the film is stalked by the aliens. Everyone except the dad, because the dad is the aliens. Pay attention to the fact that the dad is always in some random place when the others are being attacked or hunted by the aliens. Reagan seems to have a tense relationship with the dad. There's a few scenes where the two of them discuss her hearing aid. He seems very focused on fixing the hearing aid and refuses to be angry with her. Ask yourself why her ability to hear in a world where no one can talk or make noise is so important. Why would the dad be so focused on fixing her hearing aid in this situation? As I said, no one can talk or make noise anyway. Maybe he was the cause of her hearing loss. Maybe he hit her when she was small. Maybe he wants to fix the hearing aid as a way to mend their broken relationship. The son is terrified of being alone with his dad. The dad is emotionally distant from the kids for most of the film, and the son even questions if the dad loves Reagan. I think the pressures of having another baby, and the constant reminder of what he did to their last child, is what pushes him over the edge. You have to protect them. Promise me. After all they've supposedly been through, why would the mom say this? Hasn't he been trying to keep you safe? Why would this even have to be said? Maybe because the only danger is him. Again, the dad is wandering around while the aliens stalk his family and they never seem to be anywhere near him. It's almost as if he's a ghost. And that answer came in the form of the prime command to Sapha Rage, the original ghost. And the movie was shot with these juxtaposing scenes. The mom is hiding in the basement after she dropped the glass, and the dad's out on a fishing trip. The kids are gonna drown in the corn silo when the alien attacks. The dad's out looking around the cornfield with a flashlight. The mom and baby are in the flooded basement with the alien. The dad's looking at clothes on a tractor. Do you see what I mean? And when the dad is around, the aliens always seem to stay off screen. The newborn baby is crying in the basement, but since dad is here, a mattress door will keep the aliens away. 
kid breaks the lantern and the aliens kill a raccoon instead of coming in the house like they did when the mom dropped the glass in the basement. How polite of them not to interrupt dinner. The ending can be explained easily as well. If we condense the ending by combining the final basement scene with the dad's sacrifice scene, it would explain why the unstoppable and indestructible aliens were killed with a shotgun and a hearing aid. The kids and the mom hide in the basement. The dad shows up and he's angry. The shotgun keeps him at bay, but Reagan finds that the dad was putting a lot of time into fixing her hearing aid, and this was proof that he loved her and was trying to be better, and she used that emotional moment to make him vulnerable. The mom is forced to kill the dad, understanding that he'll never change, and this is the only way to keep her and her kids safe.